so this is the first coding problem right it's a first function that i have given in front of you right don't worry about in what language i am writing whether it is a particular language or not the complexity analysis is language agnostic okay most of the syntactical sugar will look same in most of the languages like c++ java javascript everything so we have to calculate the worst case complexity for this particular function now complexity analysis just depends on the fact that based on your input based on your input how much time your algorithm is taking right with respect to your input this is the input right based on your input how much time your algorithm is taking now what is the metric what is the metric to measure time what is the metric to measure time the metric to measure time is number of instructions executed right number of instructions executed because what we can assume is we can assume every single instruction takes c unit of time right so if we have total k instructions if we have in total k instruction we will spend kc unit of time we will spend kc unit of time right we are going to measure everything with respect to number of instructions executed every time in every code we just have to see how many number of instructions we are executing with respect to the input that is going to help us to calculate the time now just think about it this is what one instruction so let's say this takes some c unit of time this return answer is just one instruction though it takes c unit of time okay now here we have a for loop here we have a for loop inside the for loop the first statement is the variable initializer variable initialization happens only once so this is going to take this statement is going to take c unit of time so see c plus c plus c we have three c's okay now this loop is going to go for n iterations c from 0 to less than n is what total n iterations n times this loop will go right from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 so on and so forth then n minus 2 and then n minus 1 this is total n iterations this is total n iterations can i say that okay so in the zeroth iteration or when i is equals to 0 that is the zeroth iteration you execute this one instruction that is you check whether 0 is less than n if it is less than n then you go inside first instruction then you go inside second instruction so total instructions are what 1 2 3 and then you go back and then do i plus plus that's the fourth instruction so when i is equals to 0 you do actually execute four instructions right approximately you can see four instructions what are the four instructions you first compare 0 is less than n yes then you print 0 then you add 0 to answer and then you increment the value of i so there are total four instruction when i was 0 then when i became 1 because due to the last instruction i became 1 when i became 1 you will again check is 1 less than n then you print 1 then you add 1 to the answer and then you increment i so again four instructions so four instructions for i is equals to 1 then for i is equals to 2 also you will be having four instructions and so on when i is equals to n minus 1 then also you will be having four instructions and at the last instruction of i is equals to n minus 1 i will become n right and then this for loop will terminate right so approximately in every iteration you are executing four instructions and how many total iterations are there total n iterations total n iterations so how many total instructions you have executed in one iteration you are executing four instructions 
so in n iterations you are going to execute 4n instructions and if we assume that one instruction takes c unit of time then 4n instructions will take 4n into c unit of time can i say that so this is the total number of instructions now just think about it this is what this leads to what 4nc plus 3c now this is a constant right this is a constant so we can just what avoid it let me get a different color we can just avoid this right and if you see 4 is also a constant c is also a constant so we can even avoid a 4 and we can avoid a c so at last can i say that this leads to the time complexity to be order of n because in asymptotic notation you avoid the lower degree term and you avoid all the constants because 4 n c is what n only if let's say n is of the degree of 10 raised to the power 8 4 into 10 raised to the power 8 is approximately 10 raised to the power 8 only so that's why you get it as order of n this is how we are going to analyze every piece of code whether it is iterative whether it is recursive in similar way in similar i would say bifurcation we are going to analyze everything that's how we will get uh, i would say more confidence in analyzing time complexity of any code so i'm going to write a lot of code and we will try to debug and we will try to see how many instructions approximate everything is in approximations because if i assume that there are n instructions and technically there are n plus two it doesn't matter right it's approximately n only so everything is working in approximations right that's what we have to do Now this is the next function in front of us. This is a function f1. Looks like, right? I have written the syntax to be very verbose. This function takes two arguments, n and then m. Two arguments are there, okay? What we have to do? We have to analyze the time complexity. And time complexity is what? Total time with respect to the input. This is the input, right? So with respect to the input, how the time is changing? And how do we calculate time? How do we calculate time? We calculate time as number of instructions executed. Total number of instructions. Total number of instructions. We have to calculate. And we are going to take an assumption. We are going to take an assumption. Assume or assumption that one instruction takes C unit of time where c is constant right c unit of time where c is constant okay let's see now this is just an instruction to initialize a variable so this is going to take c unit of time this is just an instruction to print the answer so c unit of time okay so we can say c plus c is there then there are two for loops then there are two for loops Let's see the first for loop. Just think about it. When initially you will initialize this variable answer, then you will execute this for loop. Till the time you are executing this for loop, can I say very safely? Can I say very safely the fact that this for loop is not going to get executed till the time this for loop is still running? If this for loop is still running, this for loop is not going to get executed, right? Can I say that? So the second for loop will execute only after the first for loop is done let me even write it here second for loop starts if the first one ends second for loop starts if the first one ends okay cool now let's see the first for loop how many instructions are there in the first for loop in the first for loop you can see that you have initialized the variable. This variable initialization, initialization happen only once. So this is going to take c unit of time so plus c. And then, and then, in every iteration, you compare, you add, you increment. So in every iteration, I do three instructions. You can say it like this. Three instruction per iteration right so let's see 
when i is equals to zero you are going to use three instructions what are the three instructions when i is zero you check is zero less than n then you add one to the answer and then you do i plus plus i becomes one so after three instruction i becomes one then again is one less than n you add one to it and then i plus plus so again three instructions and you become i equals to two then again three instructions and so on and so forth at last the value of i will be equal to n minus one you do three instructions and then the loop will end so can you see total instructions will be equal to what 3n so here the time taken will be 3nc why 3n because in every iteration you have three instruction every iteration three instruction and what is the total iterations from 0 to n minus 1 how many iterations are there can i say n iterations from 1 to n it is n iterations similarly from 0 to n minus 1 also it is n iterations right if there are total n iterations in one iteration you execute three instructions then you see 3 and c so this for loop is contributing what c plus 3 and c now we will come to the next for loop here again you have a variable initializer that is going to take c amount of time and similarly similarly in every iteration you compare you add you increment so here also in every iteration you have three instructions per second so how many iterations do you have you have j equals to zero you have three iterations which leads to j is equals to one again three iteration which leads to j is equals to two again three iteration so on and so forth j is going to end at m minus one right when j becomes m minus one you execute three iterations and that's it so total iterations is m in every iteration you have three instructions one instruction takes c unit of time so total m iterations every iteration has three instructions so total 3m instructions and one instruction takes c unit of time so 3m instruction takes 3m c unit of time and that's it so now the overall total number of instructions we got is 3nc plus 3mc plus 4c now just think about it this 4c term is what a lower degree term because the other terms were what n raised to the power 1 and m raised to the power 1 this is technically either n raised to the power 0 or you can say m raised to power 0 so it is a lower degree term so we are going to avoid this this is going to get avoided then here you can say it is equal to n plus m into 3c now just think about it c is a constant 3 is a constant this is going to get avoided so can I say the overall time complexity is going to be order of n plus m in the worst case and just think about it no just think about it if I don't have to do this much piece of analysis then what I will say this is just whatever is the input let's say n is 10 raised to the power 5 m is 10 raised to the power 6 doesn't matter answer will be only initialized once and printed once so can I say these two statements these two particular statements don't depend on the input so they are constant right if there are some piece of instructions whose execution doesn't depend on n or m then they are constant but the for loops depend on the input right so how much time the for loop is going to take for loop initializes something that's so is constant but the remaining instruction goes n times remaining instruction goes m times and first these n instructions will be executed then these m instructions will be executed so you can directly define that okay there is a for loop of n iterations after that there is a for loop of m iterations total it is order of n plus m similarly in the previous question there was only one for loop of n iterations even if there is like let's say four instructions so 4n is what order of n only so that's how you have to do it that's how you have you have to calculate what will be the number of iterations in every function based on that you will calculate the time taken and calculate the worst case complexity or whatever case complexity we want to talk about we can calculate that best case and average case we are going to discuss later now let's see what will be the time complexity in the worst case for this particular function now you see the input is n so we need to check the number of instruction with respect to the corresponding input right now 
if you see this first line now it doesn't matter whether the value of n is 100 or whether the value of n is 1000 what the value of n is this instruction will be executed only once so it's a constant instruction one instruction will take c unit of time so it will just take c unit of time then in the for loop you again have a constant instruction so you can say c plus c then you can see in every iteration you do a comparison you do a printing and you increment it so three instructions per iterations three instruction per iteration all we have to figure out is total number of iterations now i starts with one i starts with one it executes three iterations or three instructions then i becomes two it executes three instructions then i becomes 3 it executes 3 instructions and so on and so forth at last i becomes log n and it executes 3 instructions and beyond that the loop terminates beyond that the loop terminates so 3 instruction per iteration and total how many iterations from 1 to n if there are n iterations then from 1 to log n can i say there are log n iterations so total iterations are what log n total iterations are log n in every iteration you have three instruction so total instruction is three log n and one instruction takes c unit of time so this is going to take c unit of time right and then at last you have one more constant instruction so can i say the total time is going to be what 3 log n c plus 3 c. This is what lower degree term. Lower degree term. So we can just avoid it. This is a constant. So we can avoid it. C is a constant. We can avoid it. So we are at last left with what? Order of log n. So can I say the time complexity of this function is order of log n? Right. And you can and you can just directly take and you can just directly see that this loop goes from 1 to log n so total iterations are log n you see there are like only three instructions you don't have anything other like this three is constant right so three log n is what order of log n and why we are taking log n because this function i've used right math dot log it calculates the logarithm and for what input you are taking the logarithm for n so i is going to be compared with log n that's it so the time complexity of this function is order of log n.